Hi everyone, welcome and welcome back to Dr. Han's classroom. I hope everyone have been doing well this week. First, I would like to thank every one of you that are asking good questions and leaving comments and uh, making video requests in the comment sections. And just yesterday, one of my viewer, Nick, asked me to talk about what fluvoxamine is and how it's being used to treat COVID-19. Well, let's continue this theme and look at how effective it is and what we know so far about fluvoxamine treatment for COVID-19. Now, I want to make a disclaimer first. This video is for educational purpose only and I make no recommendation on COVID-19 treatment. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's first look at what is fluvoxamine. Fluvoxamine is an antidepressant oral medication that is approved for treating depression. This is in a drug class called selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Drugs that are in this class are designed to increase the level of serotonin in the brain and usually after a few months of treatment, patient will show improved symptoms of depression. Fluvoxamine is a little bit different than other selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors in the drug class. Besides increasing serotonin level, it can also interact with a different receptor called the sigma-1 receptor. Now, sigma-1 receptor has been shown to inhibit SARS-CoV-2 virus replication and regulate inflammatory response in animal studies. So the idea of using fluvoxamine is to prevent the development of life-threatening cytokine storm in hospitalized COVID-19 patients. So how effective is fluvoxamine? Currently, there are several fluvoxamine COVID-19 studies, and let's look at the result that they reported. The first study. The first study was a small double-blind controlled randomized study they enrolled 152 patients with mild COVID symptoms and they were randomized to receive either 100 milligrams of fluvoxamine three times a day for 15 days or a placebo. The study looked at how effective fluvoxamine was to prevent clinical deterioration such as showing shortness of breath and low blood oxygen level. The study result was very encouraging. None of the 80 patients on fluvoxamine had clinical deterioration versus 6 of the 72 patients in the placebo group that had a clinical deterioration. Now, overall, more people in the placebo group had reported adverse events. Now, let's look at the second study. The second study was a real-world prospective cohort study during an outbreak in California in November and December of 2020. In the study, 65 patients with COVID were given fluvoxamine for 14 days at 50 mg two times a day, and 48 patients declined the same treatment. At the end of the 14 days, none, zero of the 65 who had received fluvoxamine were hospitalized. 29 of the 48 who declined treatment had residual symptoms at day 14. Six were hospitalized, two were intubated, and one died. And now let's look at the third and the latest study. The latest study was a large randomized multicenter clinical trial called the TOGETHER trial. The preprint result just came out on August 26. The study enrolled 3,238 patients. 739 patients had received fluoroxamine at 100 mg two times a day for 10 days, and 733 patients received the placebo, and the rest of them received different kinds of treatment. And here I have a flowchart that I captured from the article and showing you there are other treatments involved. But the analysis were only looking at fluvoxamine versus placebo, and the average age in the study was 50 years old, ranging from 18 to 102 years old, 57% of the participants were female. 
The study looked at how many patients were spending more than six hours in the emergency room or admitted to the hospital, and actually only 77 or fewer patients who had received uh, fluoroxamine were observed in the emergency room for more than six hours or admitted to hospital. And with the total number of 1,472 patients, they used the intent to treat analysis and calculated that fluoroxamine reduced the risk of disease progression by about 29%. However, most of the secondary endpoint although flavor fluvoxamine such as viral clearance and time to hospitalization, there were no statistically significant differences due to the smaller event rate. The study did show some type of adverse event data in a table format. However, there were no detailed discussion on the specific adverse event, but just looking at the number, there were no statistically significant differences between the treatment and the placebo group as well. So now there is another ongoing clinical trial involving fluvoxamine happening in the U.S. This is a multi-center, fully remote, randomized placebo-controlled trial of fluvoxamine for early treatment of COVID-19. The study has enrolled about 1,100 participants, people older than 30 years old in the U.S. with a positive diagnostic test and less than 7 days of mild COVID-19 symptom could apply to participate in this internet-based trial. The, tr the trial has already finished recruitment and the result is expected by the end of September. So I'll keep an eye on this study and give an update as soon as I see something released to the public. So the next question, what about cost and other concerns? The good news is fluvoxamine is available in generic, so it is quite inexpensive. According to this drug price database, it tells me that 30 tabs of 100 mg fluvoxamine cost about $18 in the US currency. However, there isn't any optimized dosage frequency established for treating COVID with fluvoxamine. And we also need to pay attention to drug interaction. And this drug can actually inhibit a few drug metabolizing enzymes. Now, I won't go into the great detail, but here are the names for the enzyme. And this could decrease the metabolism of the drugs that are also metabolized by these enzymes and at the same time increasing these drugs plasma concentrations that may or may not have some detrimental effects depending on what kind of drug that is being inhibited. And now let's look at what does the NIH say at this point. The latest update of where NIH stands on fluvoxamine was on April 23rd. The landing page referenced the small randomized trial and the prospective cohort studies that I just talked to you guys in this video. And currently, the NIH states there is insufficient evidence to recommend for or against the use of fluvoxamine to treat COVID-19. Again, they ask for results from well-designed and well-conducted clinical trials. And I'm curious how the latest TOGETHER trial may change what NIH has to say about fluvoxamine. And lastly, let's wrap up this topic with some basic pharmacology for everyone, what everyone needs to know about drug treatments. While drugs for symptomatic relief such as treating fever using acetaminophen here in the US or paracetamol worldwide uh, with just one or two dose that would work, drug treatments for an illness or infections require extended dosing. Chronic illnesses such as high blood pressure will require patients to take drugs every day and acute infection caused by bacteria usually require 7 days of treatment and chronic viral infections such as HIV AIDS require lifelong therapy to control the viral load. And for any drugs to work, they need to maintain something called a minimum effective concentration in the plasma and be able to distribute to specific tissues. 
and the minimum dosage is often referred to as effective dose, and it is dependent on chemical and physical properties of the drug, and as well as how our body metabolizes the drug. Let's have a conclusion and summary. Fluvoxamine showed a promising result to treat mild COVID in randomized control trials. It appears to be quite safe for short-term use. However, we still need to be cautious on drug interactions. And the good news is the cost for the drug is quite low. So I hope this video has provided some useful educational content on COVID-19 treatment. Now, although I'm not able to reply to every single comment, I do read them and take viewers' video requests. But because of my busy full-time working schedule, it does take me um, some time to get through all of them. And if you would like to continue to receive COVID-19 related treatment uh, or vaccine update or learn more about other health science topics, please consider subscribing to this channel and uh, share and like this video. This channel need your help to reach more people. And I also have other COVID vaccine related topic here. The link are here and here and feel free to check them out. And meanwhile, please stay safe and healthy and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.